A lot of popular New Age teachings and ideas are actually subtle distortions of Eastern spiritual teachings. Now, these New Age teachings are close to a profound truth, but they're distorted just enough to pose a lot of harm to those who live their lives by these teachings. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the New Age teaching, also known as the Law of Attraction, or you create your own reality, and how it can and does cause a lot of pain and suffering in the lives of those who practice it. Lisa Ingalls Witter and welcome to my channel where I help spiritual seekers just like you to get simple answers to deep spiritual questions. So be sure to subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos every week and also be sure to click on the notifications icon so that you can know when I post a new video. Pew Research polls have shown that 62% of Americans hold New Age beliefs. Now, unfortunately, many New Age teachings have been appropriated from other spiritual teachings, including Buddhism and Hinduism and Christianity. Now, one of these teachings that I think we're all familiar with is you create your own reality, which has also become known as the Law of Attraction. Now, unfortunately, this teaching has been very subtly distorted over time. And while getting a profound teaching like this a little bit wrong in the beginning doesn't really matter, especially in the short run, over time, this distortion is sort of like navigating a boat just one degree off course. You end up landing on a completely different continent. So this teaching that you create your own reality actually comes from the Upanishads, which are Vedic texts uh, written in Sanskrit, and they were written between 800 and 200 BC. So the true purpose of this teaching was to empower the practitioner with this realization that their experience of reality is due more to internal causes and conditions than to external ones. Now, what do I mean by internal causes and conditions? Well, in yoga philosophy, these are subtle impressions of our past actions, which are deposited um, into the mind, what they would call the mind, and these are known as samskaras. Samskaras cloud our ability to perceive the true reality of our experiences, and over time, these subtle impressions begin to affect our discrimination and our perception of reality, and we begin to spontaneously think and speak and act in accordance with these perceptions. And those actions have consequences over time, which is actually the definition of karma. So this really speaks to the importance of understanding how karma plays a very significant role in what our life experience is. Um, now, this can be a really hard pill to swallow, but when you realize that once you do this inner work of healing and releasing these internal causes and conditions and in clearing your karmic patterns, your experience of reality begins to slowly, it begins to shift, usually in very subtle ways at first, but over time in very significant ways. So this is very different than the popular New Age idea that by focusing on the positive and focusing on what you want is going to raise your vibration and begin to create this amazing, beautiful life. It can be really freeing once you understand the true meaning of this teaching because the truth is that nobody has the power to manifest everything that they want in life, no matter how much positive thinking you do, no matter how much visualization you do. So you don't have to beat yourself up for not being able to manifest that thing that you think you really want. Because even if you do the work of clearing all of those sabotaging beliefs and healing your blocked chakras and meditating with crystals, right, twice a day, you'll inevitably come up against this experience of not being able to manifest that one thing that you really want. So until you look at your life experiences in this context of karma and samskaras, which is actually the missing piece that the New Age spiritual teachings leave out of this ancient teaching, you're going to completely miss the mark on what this teaching actually means. Now, there's a second part of this teaching, and that is that 
the you that creates this reality has nothing to do with the ego self. It has nothing to do with the personality, which is just a mental construct. The you that creates your reality that this original teaching is referring to is this indwelling divine love intelligence that lives in you, through you, and as you. And from a non-dual perspective, perspective, there's only one doer, and that is not the you who has a personality and an ego and is named Lisa or Bob or Susie or, or whatever. Furthermore, um, that you is not separate from anything else. It exists everywhere, in everyone, in all things. Now, unfortunately, none of this is part of the New Age interpretation of this teaching. New Age practitioners are told that you, the ego self, simply has to think these positive thoughts and visualize and get into this right vibrational frequency and then take action to create whatever it is that you want in life. Now, in the short run, this might not seem too problematic because well, the truth is that some of your actions will actually create the results that you want. And because of your own cognitive biases, you're actually going to think that the reason why you manifested those things was because of your use of this teaching of the law of attraction, when in fact, there were so many other causes, so many other things that probably influenced the reason why you got those results. Now, in the long run, thinking that you, you the separate individual, you the personality, you the ego self can create anything that you want is not only a type of magical thinking, it's at, at its worst, it's actually a narcissistic type of thinking. To think that you alone are solely responsible for all of the good that comes into your life is just a narcissistic thought or a narcissistic way of thinking. So the final and most important piece of information that's completely missed in this new age teaching is that egoic desire will always end in suffering. Sooner or later, it's going to end in suffering. So key to the law of attraction teachings is this idea of building up as much desire as you can for that thing that you want to manifest as possible. Just build up all of this desire. And by building up this desire, you create this vibration field that will attract that thing to you. Now this goes directly against the original teachings which warn practitioners to beware of desires that come from the ego self. Why? Why do they warn against doing this? Well, because those things that the ego wants, money, love or relationships, health, fame, power, all of those things are impermanent. And once you get those things, once you get those things which are impermanent, at some point they're going to be gone. They're going to not be in your life anymore. So this is going to lead to you trying to grasp or hold on to those things that are impermanent, even though they're eventually going to leave you. They're not going to be there. And this causes the experience of suffering. And you get into this cycle, into this karmic cycle, once again. So innocent practitioners of the law of attraction are really headed down this road that will, if they stay with it long enough, will lead them to the experience of pain and suffering in their life. It's time for question of the day. What ahas or insights did you have about the law of attraction that may be causing you more harm than good? Leave your answer in the comments right below and I look forward to having that conversation with you. Also, I invite you to check out my Facebook group. It's a free Facebook group. Um, Spiritual, it's called Spiritual Practice for Turbulent Times, and we meet twice a week live to do spiritual practices to help you meet all aspects of life more fully and freely, and you can find the link below to that group in the description below. Thanks so much for joining me, and I hope to see you next time. Namaste. 